In the previous example, after we created the figure object, we then created two uh, axes subplots so that we could put, uh, populate them separately. But a lot of times we'll want to just create a single subplot. Um, and so in, we can see that I did that here by saying I have one column, one row, and we are instantiating the subplot number one. So, um, and here I use this ax notation that I said you would see. I also forgot to make note that when we um, create the figure object, we can specify the amount of size that that figure is going to take up as the argument that we pass into it instead of um, leaving it as an empty uh, set of parentheses. So now I'm basically going to generate plots just like I did in the last example, except instead of putting those plots into different subplots, I'm just going to put them, I'm going to use this plot method on the same subplot object. And so if we run this, we can see that um, it uh, generates basically the same two graphs, um, but because they're put on the same um, single subplot, they have to share the same y-axis. So it makes um, the deaths graph be compressed down to the bottom of the screen. So is this good or bad? Well, it depends on what you're trying to show. If you want to see the details of the, of the deaths, this isn't as good. But if you want to see how they compare to the um, infection rate, um, then this is better. It's also possible rather easily, instead of using the line plot um, method, we can just simply substitute bar chart. Um, if we do the, the bar method, um, we can specify the colors again, but um, the other features that we did, like kinds of markers and line style, don't apply to bar charts. So we can leave those arguments out. And if I run this, I'll see that I get a, a similar sort of pattern, except now the, um, the chart is, uses bars instead of uh, markers and dotted lines. So in some ways, this is a, a maybe visually better way of showing the magnitude. One thing that I should note is that this is not a stacked bar chart. This is an unstacked bar chart, which means that the value of infections is not being placed on top of the bar for the number of deaths. It's being plotted and then the number of deaths is being put on top of it. So when we see the top of the bar, this represents the value of the infections, it is not the value of the total of the infections plus the deaths, which is what you would have in a stacked bar chart. So making an unstacked bar chart is like very straightforward because all we have to do is change the plot type to bar and it's practically generated automatically. However, making a stacked bar chart is a bit more complicated as we will see in the next example. So just to summarize, um, if you choose to use figures and subplots instead of just using the generic plot function, the coding um, is a little more complicated, but the degree of control that you get over labeling is a lot greater. Um, and then, as I said, this is also good if you want to generate a large number of subplots progr programmatically, um, which we did not do, but that is a, a potential reason why you would want to, um, to instantiate figures and subplots.